Let's talk about the central limit theorem. This is kind of a complicated theorem to understand, but is pretty simple to use. So I'm going to try to help you kind of connect the dots between um, normal distributions and sort of where we end here with mean of sample means and standard error. So what we're going to do is look at a approximately normal distribution. Um, this is one of the Rossman chance applets. You can go to rossmanchance.com to find them all. And in this one, we have a large population of 18,000 um, people, and it looks like, or observations of sleep durations in hours. So this one has an average of about eight and a standard deviation of about 1.5. Um, and we're, what we're gonna do is sample from this population. And what I'm gonna start with is um, just a small sample of 10, and I'll just draw one to start off with. So when we compare the original distribution, we can see these blue dots in here. Those are the sampled observations. And over here we have them plotted. And then the sample mean is calculated to be 8.4 and that's plotted on the far right. So if we were to continue to do this, um, draw samples of 10, each of these we're gonna see and we're gonna see a sample mean of each. And I'll just draw a whole bunch of these and what I'm going to do is scale this so it's the same as the population. Now, what I see is that the sample means are all pretty close to the population mean. There is some variation, but they're all pretty close. And basically what happens is if you take 10 observations from this population and average them, you're kind of going to center that out pretty close to the population mean. So that's the first thing that the central limit theorem says. Basically, if we average over and over and over again, all of these averages are gonna be close to the population mean, but with some variation. Every once in a while, like this sample is unusually high. We have most of the measurements coming from above the mean, and so that sample mean will be unusually high, but most of the time we're close to the middle. That concept of being close to the middle most of the time and then having some variation from that, that is basically a normal distribution in itself. So what we get is this resulting distribution is called the distribution of the sample mean. And I'm gonna go ahead and just draw um, about a thousand, let's do a thousand samples, still sample size 10, I'm gonna keep that consistent. And so now I have a total of 1040. Let me rescale this and take a look. Now that is a bell curve in itself, but it's a lot more scrunched or kind of squeezed together compared to the original. So what we get is we, we get a normal distribution, but with um, less variation or a lower standard deviation. So you can see that standard deviation right there is only 0.485, and we started with 1.5. And let's go ahead and do about another 10,000 just to really fill this out and we see we get a really nice smooth curve um, with a mean that's close to where we started and then a standard deviation that's um, quite a bit smaller, maybe about a third the size. And so if we look back at the notes, we see that, that actually that's exactly what this is saying. It's saying if we take the mean of all sample means, so that's what we're looking at on the right. This is Each of these is a sample mean and I average that out, that's close to the population mean. And then if I find the standard error, so that's the standard deviation of these sample means, it's the original standard deviation divided by square root of m. I did samples of 10, um, size 10. And so what I would do is take 1.51 divided by square root of 10. Let's just do that in a separate calculator here. 1.15, or no, 51 divided by square root 10, it's about 0.478. Um, where was I over here? About 475, so I'm pretty close. Um, I would have to continue to do this for quite a while to kind of approach the, those values. Um, I would eventually get that 8.001 and 4.78 if I were to continue this process. So that's really the basics of the central limit theorem. Once you figure out your mean and standard error, um, you can use Staplet to calculate probabilities and things like that. 
but let's look at another example first. In this one, we're looking at the weights of pennies. And so, um, wait, this is not what I want. Let's look at, here we go. What we have is a, more like a uniform distribution. And when we have a uniform distribution, it's not going to work quite as well. Let's draw 10,000 samples of size 10. Now that one, it does look kind of like a bell curve. Um, the problem is it's not quite exact. Um, let's even look at a more extreme example. Let's take samples of four. Now you can see the top of it kind of flattens out. And so when we start with this uniform distribution, we don't really get exactly that bell curve out of it. So another aspect of the central limit theorem is you really need to start with a normal distribution. Um, if you don't, then you need that sample size to be greater than or equal to 30. Um, there are a couple notes about finite populations as well. We need our sample size to be um, less than 5% or no more than 5% of the population size. If not, there's actually a little calculation involved. And I think we're just taking an introductory look at it, so we don't really need to worry about that last one. That's why that's grayed out. The main thing is, is we want the sample size to be at least 30 if the population is not normal. So this will work a lot better when we have 30 here. Then we'll get that bell curve that's not flattened off at the top. Um, the same would be true for a skewed distribution. Um, I believe some of these are skewed. So there's one that's um, got some skew to it. Let's draw samples that are small first to take a look at that. So we see the, the sampling distribution over here. So what we have is um, 10,000 samples. Each of them, the sample mean is calculated. It's also skewed. So some of that skewness has kind of made its way into the resulting sampling distribution. To avoid that, I'd want to have samples of at least 30. And when I do that, I'm going to get a nice bell curve without that skewness. So what we're going to have is basically when we have our big enough samples, we can kind of even out that skew because we're doing a bunch of means and um, those will all be very close to the middle with um, occasional outliers or occasional deviations from that. So that's the concept of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Um, you don't really need to use these simulations. Um, those are just to demonstrate the process. In actuality, we typically will do that with either Desmos or Staplet. So let's take a look at how those calculations go. Here I've got those same parameters that I started with. Sample mean of 8.001, standard deviation of 1.51. So these are sleep durations. Now, if I'm taking a sample instead of individual, well, first let's take a look at individual. The probability of selecting an individual who got, let's say, less than seven hours of sleep, I'm going to do it that this way. That's about 25% of individuals are getting less than seven hours of sleep. But now, when I use the central limit theorem, I'm going to collect a sample. So I'm just going to put in the square root of n and actually use a slider. So n has to be at least, uh, well, it's going to have to be at least 1 with a step size of 1. Um, we could go up to, let's say, 100 here. So now we can see as that sample size increases, we see less and less variation from the mean. And I may need to actually kind of zoom out to really visualize that. So um, if I take a sample of 30 individuals and then rescale this, this is the distribution of the sample mean. So the question would be like, in a sample of 30 people, what's the probability that their average sleep duration is less than seven hours? That's gonna be very, very small. So with an individual, that was a 25% chance. We're just picking one or making one observation. But if we collect 30 people and average their sleep times, it's going to be a lot closer to eight hours. And so we're going to see less variation. And so these observations are going to be more and more extreme. So that's how you could use Desmos. 
Um, you can do all of the different things um, that I did in previous videos with Desmos. You don't need to use the slider. Um, you know, you can just type a number here, like let's say you have a sample of 150. You're just gonna do it that way. Um, and that will be our sampling distribution. So you really have to watch the language. Does it say that we're picking an individual? That would be a one down here, which square root of one is just one. Um, or are we picking a sample of say 45 people or something like that? Um, some people I know will just kind of leave that square root there always and decide, is it an individual or is it a sample? In Staplet, the way you'll want to do it is put your mean. This is the original population mean, and you're going to have to calculate that standard deviation, which we also we actually call standard error. You're going to have to calculate that off to the side. So I would recommend just opening up a Desmos calculator, figuring it out. This is 1.51. Let's say it's a sample of 45. Now I'm going to use a 0.225 for my standard deviation over here. Now you can take a look at what it looks like. This is the sample means with samples of 45. And then I can calculate probabilities um, or I can calculate values associated with probabilities. So for example, the bottom 5% is under 7.631.